and Steve Damon. <laughs> What's the number? 688 Great Hill Road. Yes, that's good to say that. Mom is 687. <laughs> 688. <laughs> well, let's see. Steve, you gave me a little list of things. Well, yeah. That you thought of with Jessie Whitehead. She was a friend of your mom's, right? Yes, I don't know how close a friend. Mm -hmm. And during the time when she was friends with her, I was working at the league and I was home every weekend. Mm -hmm. So what they did during the week, I have never taken knowledge of, but they did do some climbing, I think. Mm -hmm. And Jessie had a cabin over at the furniture car around him. Yeah, in the book it says that it was above Mrs. Scudder's place. I don't know. Mm -hmm. She knew George Washington Brown. <laughs> as a, I know I came home once and found her lying on the couch with a gin and tonic in one hand and the other hand wired to the radiator. Yeah. They <laughs> say she walked around Cambridge wired in a spike that hit the ground always. Yeah, she used to drag her chain behind it, didn't she? Uh, well, to get rid of the electricity. She dragged it so the, the spike was on the ground. Yeah. Her, she imagined she was full of electricity. Yeah. Well, oh, she was grounding herself. Yeah. Yeah. And did she have a bird also? Not that I know of. A pet bird? Well, that's that's what Ginny remembered was the fact that she had bird on her arm. She always had a rag around her arm because the, the bird would mess on her arm and otherwise, but she went around into the village with a, well, she smoked a pipe, too. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, but she had the bird, I can't remember what kind of a bird it was, but Jimmy remembered that. I guess she was, that was throughout a part of her life, so. She traveled back and forth between Boston and here. Yeah. She left her bicycle at the station. Yeah. It, it must have been the days of trains. Mm -hmm. And bus from there to a cabin. And the station was in West Osby. Mm -hmm. Steve probably remembers the station. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's now the Elk Club or something or other, but it was uh, Mount Whittier Station. I haven't been yeah. down there. It was Mount Whittier. They had, let's see, there was Mount Whittier. And there was, what was Lakeview or something? Yeah, was, that's. Uh, it was just a stop. It wasn't a real station. There was a platform there, yeah. but no, no building. Uh, I can, you know, I can Lakewood. remember. Lakewood, that was it. Lakewood. Yeah, I can remember of your sister Squeak uh, trying to pass somebody or other on that crossing, and she she got two wheels of, on the railroad tracks and two wheels of still on the road. So then I think she blew out both tires. So <laughs> oh, yeah. Able, yeah. <laughs> that made father happy. Yeah. And she didn't pay for them either. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Jesse didn't have a car. Apparently not. Did your mother drive? Oh yes. Mm -hmm. She did. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesse, uh, I don't know that she was born with this dreadful stutter. Oh. But it was when uh, her father knew about it. He had her run Arabic because he thought she could get a good job, and she did. She was in some, the Arabic library at Harvard, so she had a steady income, I guess. Mm -hmm. yes, uh, you've, probably, you've probably heard the famous story anyway, Betty, about um, uh, when she broke her back. And yes. They, and they brought her into the hospital, and, and uh, uh, Harold Shedd, didn't, I guess, didn't know her, but he worked on her, he being the great bone man, and uh, put her back together again. The next morning he went in to see how she was doing, and she started talking to him, and he said, my God, we got her head screwed on backwards. <laughs> I didn't hear that comment, but <laughs> yeah. I knew that he was startled. He yeah. thought that they brought on that stutter yeah. somehow, and really, it was a very bad stutter she was yeah, very no, hard to listen to. But was she understandable? Could you understand yes. her? Mm -hmm. But, but Just, she wouldn't. I, I I remember she wouldn't give up on a word though. No. You know, and change the word so she'd get by the stutter. So, because uh, I remember there was um, 
uh, an outing club meeting at the town hall, and Buzz Reed was president, I think, of the outing club, and, and she got up to say that, that the outing club uh, sponsored somebody to meet the train uh, to take people home, so, and meaning herself, I guess. Uh, yes. And anyway, uh, she got stuttering, and Buzz was trying to get it. <clears throat> put words in her mouth, and she wouldn't wouldn't uh, uh, accept it. You know, uh, she insisted on sticking with the same word over and over again. Yeah, that's a mistake. Yeah. So. When somebody doesn't understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Oh, I didn't know her too well. I knew that mother knew her, and they did a lot of outdoor things together. And mother, I think, had dinner over there. She was the kind that would boil up pine needles for tea, probably. <laughs> she took all George Washington Brown's recipes for things. He was, I don't know, the whole Indian, half Indian. He lived over there. Yeah, I know. Was, I knew George Washington. He, he used to keep a snake in his in his hat to keep his head cold. Oh, really? Yeah, a live snake. He he curved it around his head and and it was oh, right, in, right in his hat band. Yeah. I know his sons, like a Pete Brown or Roy Brown. He went to the school up here. And was school and Fred and I were there. Mm -hmm. Now the, um, uh, I think the house still, uh, uh, Jesse's house, I think, still stands. I don't know. Uh, because you mean the cabin over here? Middle Middle Walker. Uh, she used to be a neighbor of Middle Walker's, yeah. you know, and Middle married Jack DeLude, and, and so she's, some of her kids, I guess, are living in the old house, but she lives... Yeah, Beth Billington, the girl you yeah, met, yeah. was living in the old house yeah. with Jason Walker. Yeah, but she lives with Jack DeLude, I guess, I think... I, she's I think married he, to him, I think. Yeah, and he's a, he was a brick mason, uh, but anyway, that... And that's right next door, sort of. It's all right in there. Yeah, yeah, on the Ruby Trail. Steve trail. Walker, uh, Jason's father, yeah. it worked for us for some years. Yeah. I mean, mowing the lawn and putting on double windows, that kind of thing. Now, on my notes, I, and in fact, I spoke to you about it, uh, that it was, I was under the impression that, that your mother and, and um, uh, Jesse bicycled from here to Boston. I didn't happen to have heard about that, but I might not, because I was working. Yeah. And I was in Concord, and I got home Friday night, went down Monday morning, and they said they did during the week. But I might have told me about, but she yeah. might not. But I, I, would have, I wouldn't have been surprised at all if they did it. <laughs> they probably did. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, and I, I've got you down as, uh, or I've got your mother down as, uh, having a joint operation with Harold Shedd, uh, making ceramics, and, and yes. you had the, the an electric kill in the kitchen, and but I I was I thought that Jesse was involved with that too. I, I Not know. that I know of, she yeah. wasn't. Uh, Rod Woodard was involved in that. Yeah, they were. He was a great friend of your mother. He made that. Was a great friend of Doctor Shedd's and also a mother's, yeah. and. Uh, I think he made the first potter's wheel out of an old sewing machine. Yeah. He was a very skilled mechanic. Rod was. Yes. Yeah, because he uh, he designed some machine, the all-in-one machine, I remember, the wooden yeah. machine. Well, he'd see, he'd take these magazines, he'd see this machine for sale, and he'd say, nonsense, I'm going to make it. Yeah. And he'd make it. Yeah. Did Dr. Shedd live in this area? No, North Conway. Conway. Oh, mm -hmm. so, but your mother and he were friends, even though they Well, they got to know time. each other in wartime. She was a nurse's aide, and she liked working in the operating room better than uh, other places. So they left her, I guess. Uh, you mind if I say what he used to call her? He used to call her the old crow. Oh, she did? Yeah. He'd say, old crow, he said, can you hand me a... Forceps, um, 
scalpel or whatever. I thought he called a hawk nosed maverick. <laughs> well, he probably did that too. He was he was a he was a crude talking guy, I must say. He wasn't much on bedside manner. No. <laughs> he was a well, he, marvelous he, doctor. He passed your mother together after she fell on to Carl. Yeah, I'm yeah. glad he sent it down to Boston. Tell, yeah. tell us about that, Betty. I remember that was a, in the Tamworth women's calendar. They didn't have it correct, I don't think, what she happened. Put a, she was coming down the route trail, I think, and she put her foot on something that looked all right, but was clear ice. And she got a break in her ankle that was an angular break or something, very difficult to cope with. And Dr. Shed did patch her up, but they sent it to Boston, eventually sent it to Boston. And, this and Eddie Cave, who was Joanne Cave's husband, got her, and within a year she was back and looked at the spot where she fell. <laughs> And was she hiking by herself? Oh yes, she always hiked by herself. No, she wasn't. Cinders was with her. Well, yes. Cinders was a um, uh, schnauzer. I was going to say dog. Yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, I think, the 1st of December or something. Mm -hmm. Dr. Shen said it was fortunate it was cold enough, so she didn't suffer too much spending the night outdoors. Mm -hmm. And then how did she get down when she broke her ankle? Dragged herself. Well, uh, she went on all fours at first, and then in the morning she spent the night out. She still had quite a few brooks to go through, and she sat through them. And she came down to Helen Phelps, who I think was in the ice cream schoolhouse, whatever that is. And uh, I think Helen drove her to the hospital. Uh -huh. Helen was a Christian scientist, but she was perfectly glad to take mother to a doctor. She wanted to go to one. <laughs> so she gave her some bread and milk first. She said she got to have something, because of course mother hadn't eaten for quite a while, too. And out all night in the cold. And out all night in the cold, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. wow. And she survived. She was only about 50 then. Only about 50? But she just lost my father, mm -hmm. which. I was pleased that she had the will to go on. So that was 1939? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, it was, perhaps it was 1938, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Or 1939. Mm -hmm. I think I saw that in Fred's booklet. Father died in uh, February of 1939. Mm -hmm. I, I remember one thing about your mother and Francis Cleveland. Uh, that was uh, they used to exchange Christmas presents. Oh yes. And it was always that dead rat. Oh yeah. yeah there was a dead rat down cellar. I think it was sort of petrified. It's a mummified. Yeah, mummified. And so your mother sent it to Francis one year, all wrapped up with a Christmas present. And so the next year he sent it back to her, and it went back and forth. I don't know how many times. I think it did. <laughs> They had a good time. Yeah. <laughs> he told her stories about being selectman. He said some of them they invented, but she absorbed them all. <laughs> <laughs> I have some photos that's in one of Steve's scrapbooks that we have at the library now. Oh, fine. I don't know if you want to see some of them. Um, they're you. And you and Fred, this is my favorite one of um, Betty and Fred with their pigs. Oh, yes. Remember that one? Fred always got the real pig, and I got the stuffed pig. Yeah. What? It was that a, yes. a, an annual pig? Fred got a pig every year? I don't know. Uh, some years we had a pig that we'd buy the spray and Found up butcher in the fall. You couldn't get meat in the markets because there wasn't refrigeration then right. until the Second World War, I think. So we sometimes had a pig. We have a big pen here. Mm -hmm. And I suppose we sometimes had a calf. We always had Jersey cows. Mm -hmm. This is my grandmother here. Your grandmother Twitcha? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is me with a fake pig. 
Fred has the real thing. Fred has a toy. <laughs> and this